So hey guys and welcome back to another video and on this week's video we're going to show you my bike setup for touring including all luggage, the way I pack, what I take with me, the essentials and bike prep. So if you're interested in that stick around stay tuned we'll be right back. Okay so welcome back uh, we're all packed ready to go for the Isle of Man TT uh, we actually leave on uh, Sunday, so uh, this will be uh, the day after you see this video. And uh, we're going over for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, so four days. What I'm going to do is run through the equipment and also the way I pack on the bike and what I take with me. Let's run over first a couple of things that I make sure that I get done before I go on a long journey. One is bike prep. So uh, what do we do to the bike to get it ready for a big trip? And uh, first item really is the, uh, the tyres. Now I make sure that the tyres have got enough meat on them to probably last depending on the trip but uh, normally I like to keep about 2,000 miles left on the tyres and make sure they're not squared off in the middle before I set off because most certainly after a 2,000 mile trip you're probably going to square your tyres off depending on the trip and the routes and things that you're taking. If you're going to be doing a lot of motorway work then uh, that will certainly happen. So the second thing I do is give it a good oil change, make sure I give it a good service and uh, also do the fluids as well, brake fluids and water on the bike and also adjust the chain, make sure the chain's cleaned and lubed and all good to go. Double check the, uh, the brake pads, make sure they've got enough wear in them to last the trip. Uh, so just keep, keep on top of your bike, make sure it's tip top and ready for a, a long journey. Okay, on to luggage. So as you can see here, I've got my top box on the back. This is a Gibby uh, DLM 30B. This is a 30 litre uh, top box and this is on top of a SW Motec rack with a Gibby adapter plate on the back. Moving forward from that we've got a Oxford Aqua 30 litre roll top bag which houses all of my camping equipment and then on top of that I've got a nice sleeping mat which is one of those self-inflating ones uh, which is about 7.5 centimetre thickness so very comfortable. There's nothing like camping and being uncomfortable so uh, what I will do is I'll show you everything I've got in this bag. Uh, in here I have my tent, my uh, cooking gear, my sleeping bag, my self-inflating pillow. Too many items to mention but I get everything in a 30 litre bag so I'll show you that if it's interesting to you. So as you can see with the orange straps I use rock straps uh, on the 30 litre bag and also a small set of rock straps just to hold my sleeping mat on the top and this is far enough back that it doesn't actually touch my back when I'm riding the bike which is very important when you're on a long journey. The top box I'm going to show you inside the top box shortly and in here I have a Gibby I forget the name now but I will put it up on the screen just now and um, this is an inner bag that I put inside so I've got all my clothes everything that I can just take in one bag into a hotel or a tent and then if I was traveling without a tent Literally, I could take this 30 litre roll top bag as extra luggage and put whatever I like in there or not take it. The other thing that I use is a tank bag. Now, this is a Gibby tank bag and this is a quick release tank bag. You can easily remove this and uh, just lock it in place. And I carry in here things like camera equipment. Uh, I can also put a charge lead just through the front there to charge cameras while on the move from the cigarette light socket that's at the front there. Um, but I can also carry my wallet and spare change for toll roads and things like that. So great essential item and I'll show you in a little while from the camera on my helmet that uh, I can actually see my phone and sat nav over the top of this so it doesn't obstruct my view. Now if some of you watch the channel you'll know that I've actually put a new seat cover which is from Volcano Industries uh, on the bike to the standard seat and I've also put an insert a gel pad in here as well. Um, I have a new product coming, I'll put this on the screen just now, and this is a self-inflating uh, like seat cushion for touring. I bought that because when I was on the way back from the Netherlands last year, I actually sat on top of my self-inflating camping pillow, and it was the best thing ever for not getting an achy bum or anything like that. So I've ordered that, I will try it out. If it turns up before I go on the TT, uh, then I'll use it. If not, that will come up on our future trip which is in August which I'll tell you about shortly. 
Okay, so on the front, if you can see just here, I've got my phone mount. This is a SP Connect phone mount with the wireless charge pad. Uh, this is an essential for me. Uh, it's uh, plugged into the cigarette lighter and literally I can just put my phone on there. It's secure. The phone is waterproof and literally I can use that as a sat-nav then. Uh, my phone's always charged, so that's a, an essential for me. Uh, the other essential as a backup is the Beeline sat-nav, which works off the phone as well, just on the front there. And also a good thing to do before you actually go abroad, if you're going to a country where it's kilometres per hour, just make sure on the, uh, the dashboard that you know how to change uh, from miles per hour to kilometres per hour, otherwise you're going to get uh, caught speeding at some point. Make sure all your lights and your horn are working before you go, and also for some countries they actually uh, make you take a spare bulb kit. Now if you've got LED headlights and all LED lighting, that's impossible to do, so they can't really uh, complain about that. But uh, I know on uh, some countries, uh, France, I don't think it's legal now, somebody might correct me or not, but you used to have to take breathalyzers, little kits with you and things like that. One thing I always take is a first aid kit, and I'll show you that in the, uh, the kit makeup and some of the essentials that I take for puncture repair. If I get a flat battery, I'll show you a device that I always take with me on any trip. So there she is, the MT-10 SP, all ready for the Isle of Man. What we're going to do now is we're going to cut and I'm going to show you exactly what's in all of the bags if you're interested. And then stick around to the end because we're going to actually uh, ride the bike, tell you about the Isle of Man trip, what we're up to. And also what's coming up in a few weeks time when we do our epic Europe trip. Um, I've pretty much decided on where I'm going now so stay tuned for that at the end of the video. So let's head over to the house now, look at the kit and we'll be right back. Okay, so here's all the equipment off the bike, including my jacket, boots, the straps, the top box, the Oxfam Aqua 30 litre roll top bag, and also my self-inflating camping mat and my helmet. So everything off the bike. What I'm going to do now is unpack it, see what's inside. I'll split it into essentials that uh, is a must that I take on the bike and also um, just show you the different, uh, different bits that I take for a week or two week adventure on my motorcycle. So the top box, as I said, is a Givi DLM 30B. This is the black version. They do this in black and silver. Uh, on this top box, I've actually put the cargo net from Givi in the back to put some accessories in there. And also it's made from aluminium. It's pretty good and pretty sturdy. Inside the top box, we've got this Givi Explorer uh, bag, which is a inner bag. It's waterproof and also uh, this holds all of my clothes inside so I can get enough clothes in here for a week or two's camping got my jeans in there I've got uh, toiletries got a hoodie got four t-shirts in there and also uh, pants and socks and things and then in the top you've also got another compartment which opens up and in there I normally put my laptop or my uh, my iPad batteries, extra battery packs and things like that. I always carry some extra external battery packs when I'm camping to, uh, to charge cameras and mobile phones and things. So that's great because that's just one bag I can take out to the hotel or I can take it into the tent and then that one bag fits in the top box. On the camp gear we have like I say, the Oxford Aqua 30 litre roll top bag. And inside this bag, we've actually got the OEX ultralight chair just there. We've got the sleeping pillow. This is a Van Gogh pillow self-inflating one. And that's the one I've used to sit on on the bike before on trips, which really helps for comfort. But with the, uh, the new seat um, inflation pad that I'm getting shortly, that will uh, stay in the luggage. Uh, we've got our jet boil, got a canister inside, um, basically you can boil water in, uh, in about a minute. Uh, let me show you this in more detail because it's, uh, it's pretty good. Okay, so inside the jet boil you've got a uh, gas canister, you've got the gas ring that fits on top of the gas canister. I'm uh, just going to take that off and screw it on. You've got a little foot there that uh, unfolds. So you can actually put that on the bottom and then just on the bottom here you've got a uh, plastic 
uh, cap which you could use as a cup if you wanted to and then uh, basically that fits onto the bottom of there and then that fits on top of the gas canister and then you've got a handle here so you can cook your food up and stuff in there um, what i tend to do is uh, i tend to eat out when i go camping so if i'm short for somewhere to eat then uh, you can buy these from camping shops they're ready-made meals you've got uh, chili and rice i've got a vegetable hot pot and also i've got a uh, minced beef hot pot there and what i tend to do with these is just undo the top and then you put them in to your jet boil fill a jet boil with water boil it up and uh, five minutes that meal is ready to eat um, so those are those are really good some of them are tastier some of them better than others but those are the three i like so that's really handy if you just want to pull up at the side of the road make yourself a brew and what i use is generally the nescafe uh, these are toffee nut ones uh, coffees uh, instant coffees with milk and sugar and then i also carry some fiber one energy bars to uh, head up the road and uh, during the day i tend not to have any lunch or a big lunch really and sometimes i'll just have a few energy bars and pull up at the side of the road for a coffee if i'm on a long journey that day okay so the other thing is a uh, thermos mug that i take with me for my teas and coffees rather than drinking it out of the the jet boil uh, the jet boil tends to get quite hot so i do carry a mug with me as well uh, the other things i've got is a euro hike down 500 uh, this is a three season sleeping bag uh, 1.18 kilo packs down very small to go into the uh, the oxford aqua bag and then i've got my outwell this is the uh, explorer dream catcher this is actually a five centimeter thick sleeping mat i said it before it was a seven centimeter uh, but I've bumped it up, uh, it's brand new and uh, it's really really comfortable to lie on. The other thing I do carry is just this uh, cheap off uh, Amazon roll top bag and I tend to keep my uh, teas and coffees and food and things in that. Uh, it also doubles up as a bag you can use for dirty washing when you're out and about and uh, that's what I take with me. The other thing I mentioned, the rock straps, these rock straps uh, hold all my luggage on. They're really good these uh, go up to about 60 inch i think to uh, to hold the oxford 30 uh, bag on the back and then obviously i've got some uh, sporks as well for my food uh, the tent that i use this is a jackal oex tent now the jackal oex tent uh, comes in a, a waterproof bag when you undo this bag you've got then two other separate waterproof bags which is a real key feature that I like. Uh, this holds the inner tent, as you can see, waterproof bag, and this holds the outer fly sheet as well. So, so if you're traveling with panniers where you can put things on top, you could probably put one left and one right on here as well. So I do like that they come in these bags. And as you can see, they're not too long as well. So uh, probably about, about 400 millimeters in length, both of those, so very, very small. That's the tent of choice anyway that I take. What else do I take? So if you're traveling abroad in a warm country, I suggest take a lightweight jacket. This is one from Merlin and this is the Shenstone. It's got breathable panels in the front, uh, but what's unique on this jacket, it's also got a waterproof liner, which also keeps you warmer, um, or you can take this out and uh, get full ventilation through it. So always best to take something with zippable liners and waterproof liners so you can take those out as you head south as it gets colder or warmer. Now I normally take a pair of trainers um, to change into at night but I've recently purchased these Alpine Star Dry Star boots and they're kind of like a trainer just there. Uh, I've tried these out on the bike today and they're really really comfortable on or off the bike so uh, I'll be taking just those. So no need to take an extra set of trainers with me this time. A few things that are essential for trips. Uh, first aid kit I always take. Just uh, got some plasters and some uh, bee and wasp sting ointment and things like that. Uh, the second thing uh, is essential is I always take a tyre repair kit. This is from U-Pump UK. And as you can see in here, I've got five big canisters. And this, if I get a punch on the road, will repair it 
and uh, repair it in a way that it lasts. Sometimes you can get kits that have the small canisters in. Uh, these are large canisters, so these will really, three of these will blow your tire up and I've got two extra spare. So that's an essential for any trip. So the other thing that's really essential um, for me, it uh, doubles up as a lot of things really. Uh, this is the Noco Boost. And what this does, you can buy these in uh, the GB20, the GB40, which is this one. This will start a car, a large diesel engine car, six times. So if you get a flat battery or one of your mates on the trip gets a flat battery, then you can literally start their bike. Even if you've not got a battery on the bike, this will start your motorcycle. Um, it doubles up also. You've got some ports in the end just here. Uh, which open up you've got a USB charger uh, you've also got a light so you've got it as a torch as well just there so that doubles up like I say I can charge uh, for mobile phones cameras batteries start the bike multiple times and uh, really comes in handy really small uh, you see that size of my hand just there and uh, that's the Noco Boost Plus GB40 you can buy those from Halfords I think they're about £70 something like that but an essential for the trip. The other essential is a good torch. Uh, this torch is rechargeable and I always take this on a camping trip uh, when I go, just in case you get short and you wanna go for a pee in the night. Um, also a tent light, uh, which is another essential to hang up in the tent to get plenty of lighting. Uh, the other essential really is a towel. So if you're abroad and you're going you know, for a swim or if you're on a campsite and you just need to uh, grab a shower, these uh, lightweight travel towels, you can buy these from all camping shops. These are really great and they dry out really quickly. The other essential item that I do take is a Gibby tank bag. This comes really in handy for camera gear, um, wallet, passport, things like that, which is just easily accessible in front of you. This one comes with a uh, sunglasses holder, which is really great. Keep your sunglasses, your wallet, your passport, your camera gear, and also it does have a zippable section just in the top here. You can put some uh, things in there too. But what it does have on the back just here is a little port, I don't know if you can see that. So you can put a charging lead through there, pop your camera gear or your phone or whatever you need to, uh, to charge on the move while you're going along. This doesn't get in the way of my vision when I'm trying to look at my sat-nav, my phone or my beeline navigation system on the bike, as you'll see in the, uh, the end of the video just here. So helmet, this is the uh, RPH A11 from HAC. Uh, this is the uh, the Blear carbon Blear helmet. This is really comfy helmet. Doesn't have a drop down visor, so I have sunglasses. I do wear glasses anyway. Uh, this is a semi tint visor I have on the front of it. Uh, but camera gear. So I've got the DJI Action 2 camera on the front there, and then my audio that I uh, I do the videos with is from this device, which is basically a Insta mic, and uh, links are in the description below on this one. The other camera I take that's not here just now is my DLSLR, my digital camera for stills. Uh, gloves, always take a good pair of summer gloves depending on what temperatures and things you're riding in. If you're riding in extreme cold, then winter gloves. Pretty straightforward, common sense. Okay, so let's uh, hop back on the bike and I'll tell you about the Isle of Man trip coming up and also the big trip that we've got coming up in August. Okay, so welcome back, and uh, yeah, so the Isle of Man, we're there for four days, and we'll uh, be taking in the island, we'll be uh, going to four destinations, which will be the, uh, the main towns uh, south on the west coast at Peel, and then up towards Ramsey, so we'll show you a little bit of the island as well, not just the racing, and uh, in fact the racing is not on every day, it's kind of a day on, day off kind of affair when you're over there so we'll uh, we'll take a lot in uh, the ferry itself price wise I think I paid about 250 pounds I booked quite late that was for myself and the bike to go over for that time um, but if you book early a year in advance you can probably get it for about 150 I would imagine now if you're not a subscriber to the channel I appreciate it if you can hit that subscribe button ding that bell for future videos coming up and also, if you want to follow the, uh, the action more closely, 
We'll be posting a lot while we're over in the Isle of Man on our Instagram page. I'll put a link to that in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Just head over to Instagram, follow us on there, and uh, you'll get the daily action and a bit more content than uh, just what you get on a weekend from the videos. Now, while we're in the Isle of Man, we'll actually be camping at a campsite called Glenlough Campsite. And that is approximately five kilometres or five miles-ish from Douglas, from where the ferry gets in. And also it's right on the circuit. So literally you can pitch your tent, hop on the grass verge behind your tent and uh, watch the bikes go by. So it's a good place. Uh, it's all straight there, so they are coming past at an incredible speed. Uh, I've heard speeds in the Northwest 200 were over 200 miles an hour, so I expect them coming past there at about between 200 and 207 miles per hour, which is uh, just incredible to watch. And also we'll be uh, watching from some other viewpoints around the island, um, a few pubs and things, car parks, and uh, having a drink and a spot of lunch while the racing's on, uh, which will be great. So really looking forward to it, and uh, just hope the weather stays like it is, nice, no rain, and the uh, temperature holds out a little bit. Today it's about 16 degrees, and the forecast's uh, probably going to be about the same. But the good thing about the Isle of Man, it's a very small island, and uh, the weather is very changeable. If it does rain, it doesn't last for long until it goes over, so let's see. So the ferry from Hesham to Douglas is approximately six hours, and you can book cabins, I think, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to be uh, I'm going to sit down and a rest, trying to get some uh, sleep because I actually leave, I think it's uh, 2 a.m. and we get into Douglas at 6 a.m. So we'll have the, uh, the full day on Sunday, the 5th, to uh, explore the island and get the tent pitched. Now the equipment you've just seen, the tent, the OEX Jackal 2, uh, I've tried many tents over the years and basically that one is uh, a good two-man tent. There's plenty of space in there for your equipment and luggage and things like that. And also I've used that tent in the rain and there was no water leaks or anything like that. The OEX chair and the OEX table you've seen, um, I bought those. I had an OEX chair before actually, and uh, many years ago. So I, uh, I bought those again to use because they're uh, really comfortable. Better than a stool with a, uh, a high back that you can just relax in by your tent early evening, have a beer, have some food, and the sleeping mat that I bought, I'll have already uh, told you what make and brand it is, um, it's really, really comfy. Now, one thing, when I go camping, I like to be comfortable. And as you can see, all of that gear fits in a 30 litre roll top bag, which is just great, just one bag to lift on and off of the bike when I go camping. So, on to the news of the big trip. Now, I've got 16 days, actually I've taken 10 days Monday to Fridays, two weeks off work, but with weekends it's 16 days in total. Uh, wife and kids are away visiting family abroad, so I've got 16 days to be able to do what I want. And uh, quite fortunate, thank you wife for that. So what I'm going to do is, I was planning to head into Europe, and uh, Covid restrictions and all those kind of things are pretty good now. So I've decided that I'm going to head down through France and first day will be obviously Eurotunnel through to Calais and then uh, in two days what I want to do is head down to the south coast of France to Nice pretty quickly and the reason for that is that I have uh, booked a ferry from Nice to Corsica and I'm going to take a uh, about a four day break on Corsica with the bike showing you around the island and the different areas. Uh, it's very mountainous, very beautiful from what I've seen. And then we're going to get the ferry after Corsica to Italy, so Livorno in Italy, which is uh, just south of Pisa. And then I'm going to head up through Pisa over the, uh, the mountain there into a uh, beautiful walled town called Luca. And I have a good friend, an ex-work colleague that lives there, so I'm going to spend a, uh, a day and a half with him and uh, catch up in Luca. And then we're going to head north, uh, probably through Bologna and up into Lake Como, uh, which was always on my plan. I've never seen Lake Como and I want to go there. 
and then we're going to head north uh, from Como up through Switzerland to Lake Constance. And from Lake Constance we're going to head north then up towards the Black Forest and Baden-Baden. And then from there we're going to head north up through South Germany, past the Nürburgring, up towards Aiken. And then we're going to head back towards uh, Calais to get the, uh, the boat back over. So uh, quite a big trip, probably uh, about 2,000 miles. But uh, yeah, the first couple of days, like I say, I'm going to kill it just to get through France to get down, get the ferry, and the uh, the trip really starts when we get into uh, the south coast of France, so I can spend more time in the nice warm weather. If any of you are wondering uh, what sat-nav I use on the bike, I mentioned I use my phone or the Beeline, and uh, I think we've got some cyclists in front here. Yep. Try and get past these. Some corners coming up. So yeah, SatNav. Uh, now I use a SatNav app called Copilot, and I've used it for thousands and thousands of miles on trips in the last 10 years. Uh, the app, you can download the maps, which is good, so it doesn't use your data on your phone if you're using it abroad. And I've had some really good times with that app, so that's Copilot. Um, one thing I will say is I, uh, I never plan my trips too well, and what I mean by that is accommodation. I use things like booking.com and what I've done in the past is I actually get to a uh, lunch stop and then I decide how far I want to go past the lunch stop in uh, riding miles and hours um, before we, you know, wrap it up for the day. So that allows me to book somewhere directly on the booking.com app or a similar app and uh, also I found some great accommodations over the years doing it that way. By doing it that way, you're not actually killing yourself trying to get to a destination and get the miles in. Sometimes it can be deceiving when you're looking at a map, how many miles are actually involved and the terrain and everything. I always find that it takes a little bit longer on a motorcycle to get to a destination. Just because you're stopping every now and then to look at the scenery, grab photos, or your backside aches, or you're fueling up more than a car, and uh, yeah, it always works for me. Looking forward to the Isle of Man TT races. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe. Give us a big like if you can, guys. And uh, we'll catch you on another video soon. Okay, cheers. Take care.